he says, I've made a decision, right? Uh, not like this is just a part of all of the ethereal musings that I've had going through my mind for the past 10 years. Um, I've made a decision. This is my path now. He says, this is now my ministry. Russell Brand has been a lot of things in his career. Uh, he has been an addict. He has been a shock jock. He's been a comedian. He has been an, an actor. And more than anything, he was known as a womanizer, a philanderer, and an addict. And he has, over the years, transformed that image into someone who has embraced recovery. He's even written a book about the 12 steps. Not only that, but he started becoming deeply interested in different spiritual practices. And like a lot of people who go on that kind of a journey through the 12 steps, where in the very first step, you have to submit to a higher authority, they begin kind of looking into and combining a lot of different higher authorities and a lot of different religious doctrines and dogma. And it kind of becomes this mishmash that is just called basic spirituality. And so their language becomes infused with language from across a broad spectrum of religious background. And over the these years, Russell Brand has also become a very famous podcaster. Many would call him kind of a conspiracy theorist. He asks a lot of big questions. A more recent development is his interest in Christianity, which culminated with him getting baptized this weekend. Let's look at a little bit of his journey on this trip from uh, com complete nihilist now to claiming Christianity. And we go. The reason I wear a cross is because Christianity and in particular the figure of Christ are, it seems to me, inevitably becoming more important as I become more familiar with suffering, purpose, self and not self. I'm reading the Bible a lot more and as I've told you before, I'm reading Rick Warren's Purpose Driven Life. When I grew up, Christianity seemed like it was either really irrelevant and old fashioned and sort of dusty and sort of incense and sort of, or they tried to modernize wow. it and it seems just like, right, okay, we're going to talk about Jesus. And like both of those routes seem like, mm, I don't know if there's anything for me. And I suppose it takes a certain amount of adulthood and it might be different for all of us. For me, it seems that it's taken quite a lot to recognize that you need, I need a personal relationship with God. It occurred to me that if instead of always talking to myself inwardly, I could replace one of those voices with an indwelling God. It says in Galatians, it is our job to die so that as Christ died on the cross, he might be reborn in us. I'm very interested to hear what you think, because for me, my heart is open. Let me know what you think in the comments and chat. Remember, you could join. All right. So this was back in January and you know, critics are going to be critical. That's just what they're going to do. And the majority of people online seem to be critics. Uh, they don't really have a lot of positive information to add to conversations. They're just really good at tearing things down. And Christians can, can be professionals at this as well. And so a lot of people are saying, you know, his language is off. I saw videos really like forensically breaking this down that he's in a yoga pose and the the patch in the middle of his left arm is some kind of reiki something or another and i mean i'm not even saying people are wrong about that um i, I think russell brand's style choices basically are like what's the most eclectic thing i could wear um if he's putting a lot of conspiratorial thought into the religious symbolism on him and maybe he is maybe everyone's right and i'm wrong uh, i'd be very surprised by that so people break this down what i want to look at is what he's saying um he said some things that are very important to indicate someone understands the gospel like a personal relationship with god uh, like that you have to die in order for christ to live in you and that's true he's actually quoting galatians 2 20 which says i've been crucified with christ and i no longer live but christ lives in me and he's his language isn't perfect and he's at this point not even claiming to fully be a believer um he's saying so that you know Christ can be reborn. And the truth is it, it's us who are reborn because Christ now indwells us. We are a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. It goes on to say the life I now live in the body. I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is a great verse. If you're going to look for a verse that explains the gospel and what the gospel actually means and how to receive this new life and how to be born again. Haters are going to hate, you know, so a lot of people really questioning this. And that all caught even more traction when he came out just this last week and announced that he was, in fact, going to be baptized. Let's take a look. Die and be reborn. This Sunday, I'm taking the plunge. I'm getting baptized. 
at the moment, I'm very curious as to what you who have been baptized feel about it, what your expectations are of the event prior and what it's actually like. What's been explained to me is it's an opportunity to die and be reborn, an opportunity to leave the past behind and be reborn in Christ's name, like it says in Galatians, that you can live as an enlightened and awakened person. Sometimes I think of non-Christian perspectives on it, like Marcus Aurelius saying, you are already dead, now live the rest of your life properly, or the Buddhist saying, put down the corpse. All of these things seem so inviting and beautiful. I know a lot of people are sort of cynical about the increasing interest in Christianity and the return to God. But to me, it's obvious as meaning deteriorates in the modern world, as our value systems and institutions crumble, all of us become increasingly aware that there is this eerily familiar awakening and beckoning figure that we've all known all of our lives within us and around us. And for me, it's very exciting. One of my concerns is I'm thinking about doing it in the River Thames. So I could be getting sort of baptized in toxoplasmosis and wow. E. coli based on what I've learned. So, uh, Again, people are going to nitpick anything he puts out to death, and, and he acknowledges that. There's, there's been a lot of cynicism. People are wondering about this. In the last video we'll look at, he kind of says straight on, like, a lot of people just are going to see me as a celebrity, and they're wondering what this is all about. And so you see that Russell Brand, in some of his language, um, has – naturally kind of adopted things that sound a little bit new age. A lot of Christians hackles go up when in talking about baptism, he starts talking about Buddhism, or he says, you know, a, a non-Christian aspect from Marcus Aurelius. And so what does that mean? Does that mean that's how he's processing it and how he's thinking about these things and that he has studied deeply and broadly across philosophy and religion for the last however many years, and he's connecting all the pieces together? Or does it mean he doesn't really understand this because the call to Christianity is not a call to be interested in Christ. It is a call to submit to Christ and to die to yourself, right? So, People are nitpicking this to death, and I think what you have to do is you have to understand who you're listening to. You have to KYA. You have to know your audience. You have to know who is speaking, and if you listen to Russell Brand speak about any topic for more than 45 seconds, uh, he has a very specific way and a very specific pattern of getting information across, and he's not someone who typically comes out and goes from A to B to see. And I think a lot of the Christians who honestly still probably wouldn't be satisfied, but who are questioning the legitimacy of his faith, what they want to hear is for him to go, you know, kind of like we learned in vacation Bible school, A, admit you're a sinner, B, believe in Christ, C, commit your life to him, you know, and they want to like see it spelled out like that. And he, he speaks in not even circles, really kind of in spirals. And he's getting his point across embedded in there though, if you're paying attention, um, he is talking about death. He is rooting it in the scriptures in Galatians. And so now he got baptized. He went through with it. Let's look at this last post. I've got challenges. I still live in the world, but I feel as if some new resource within me has. Yesterday, I got baptized and it was an incredible, profound experience. And many of you will have had your own experiences of baptism and will therefore know what I'm talking about. Many aspects of it were very intimate and personal. The truth is this, as a person that has in the past taken many, many substances and always been disappointed with their inability to deliver the kind of tranquility and peace and even transcendence I always felt I've been looking for, something occurred in the process of baptism that was incredible overwhelming literally overwhelming because i was obviously underwater and it was the river thames at some points so i felt changed transitioned now of course even though it's been less than 24 hours in the interim period i've already felt like sort of irritation i've got three children i've got a job i've got challenges i still live in the world but i feel as if some new resource within me has switched on so many of your comments have been so beautiful and encouraging and i really appreciate it and also even the cynicism i understand because some people will just see me as a celebrity but i don't see me as a celebrity because i was me when i was a little boy i was me when i was a junkie i was me when i was poor i've been me in all of the different phases but i recognize that anything in this terrain in the sort of social media world could be exploited utilized for me i've made the decision and i know what the decision is i've made it for myself and i pray that it will be relevant to my family in particular my children my wife's catholic you know she's already made her own choices in this life including this one this is new for me i'm learning and i will make mistakes but this is my path now and i already feel incredibly blessed relieved nourished held it's been an incredible experience. I wish I could tell you exactly about it because there were amazing individuals involved. There were incredible and bizarre incidents that took place that felt serendipitous and laden. You know, I do a show every day. I'll be talking about this stuff in the show because it's part of my mission and it's part of my ministry and it's part of my service. Wow. This is new to me and it's a joy to me. And 
I know that I'm not expected to be perfect and I know that that's not something I'll be able to deliver. Those of you that have embraced me, I'm so grateful. I can't tell you how happy I feel and how relieved I feel. But as you know, if you know, my resources are coming from somewhere else and someone else now. Thank you so much for your support. Let's keep doing this together. I'm just going to call it to me. And this is me. You'll get to know me if you listen to the podcast, if you come to Meta Church. To me, I'm going to take the dub. I, I'm just going to always take the win when someone is proclaiming Christ. And maybe you think I'm deceived and I'm not discerning enough and that's fine. I'm sure you will tell me in the comments, but I, I just see this and he says, I've made a decision, right? Uh, not like this is just a part of all of the ethereal musings that I've had going through my mind for the past 10 years. Um, I've made a decision. This is my path now. He says, this is now my ministry and I'm young at this and I'm learning. And I hope that he will sit under solid teaching and that he'll surround himself with elders in the faith and people who he can wrestle through these things with and really continue to line his life up to who God has called him to be. And it's heartbreaking anytime something like this comes out that we have people so quick to dismiss it. And I understand at some level because as Christians, it's heartbreaking. In the next segment, we're going to talk about yay. And it's heartbreaking to be like, Jesus is king. And then him be like, ah, I'm not so sure about Jesus a few years later. And it's really, really tough. And so we get a little shell shocked. And we've even seen that probably in our own life, someone who started coming to church and got involved and then slipped away and then kind of left their claim of Christianity. And it can be so heartbreaking for us. And it's like, we don't want to be fooled again. And so let's give them enough time. And I just don't see that in scripture. I see wisdom and discernment. I see the call to not neglect gathering together so that you can sit under good leadership and people who are are ahead of you in the faith and can help you and lead you along. Um, but we should celebrate when somebody claims Christianity. We should celebrate when someone gets baptized. We should celebrate when someone's resources are no longer coming from their celebrity or from their wealth, but their resource is now coming from God. We should celebrate this. And I think there is a, a really undeniable biblical precedent for this as well. The apostle Paul was sitting in prison and there were people who were preaching and they were preaching out of envy and they were trying to create distress for Paul in they're preaching, which let's just acknowledge. I mean, that's wild. People are preaching and they're throwing shots at Paul, like boom, roasted. And he's in prison and he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. And so Paul responds to this in his letter to the Philippians. And he says, to be sure, this is absolutely happening. Some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. These preach out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely thinking that they will cause me trouble in my imprisonment. But what does it matter? Only that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is proclaimed. And in this, I rejoice. Here is people's concerns and the reason people are dragging Russell Brand on Twitter and writing blog posts about him, putting out questioning, you know, YouTube videos is what if it's, what if it's out of false motive? What, what if this, this is selfish ambition? What if he's just doing this to try to cover all of his past sins, which are well-documented and there are many, many, many of them. Um, what would that look like? And it's like, I don't know, man, according to the apostle Paul, who lived with just always a, a pilgrim's perspective, a heavenly perspective, he just said, I don't know, man, it seems like a good thing that Christ is being preached. And when we so see someone who has a platform the size of Russell Brands coming to Christ and getting baptized, we should take the approach of the apostle Paul uh, as long as Christ is proclaimed in this, I will rejoice. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed so you can stay up to date with all new content. And if you want early access, exclusive content, and monthly live Q&As, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Clayton Tyler.